Hi, and welcome to episode 97 of the Dinner Sisters podcast. We're two sisters taking on the nightly challenge of dinner. 97, Betsy. That's a lot like, I'm having, of episodes. That's a lot. I'm having, okay. Anyway, I don't know why I needed to pause, but I had a moment there. I'm Kate Schultz, living and working in Rhode Island. I'm a passionate cook and recipe collector, always thinking about my next meal. And I'm Betsy Wallace. I live, work, and raise a family in Atlanta, Georgia. I love dinner time, but can always use help planning and cooking for my family of five, even after 97 episodes, Kate. (laughs) Even 97 (laughs) times later. Yeah. Our goal with this podcast, we want to cook a little better, learn a little bit about food, and most importantly, figure out what the heck to have for dinner. And here's how this works. Like every week, we have three recipes that we cooked and reviewed from popular food blogs, internet chefs, and other sources on the World Wide Web. We'll have all these recipes, tips, the smorgasbord, and the shopping list on our website at dinnersisters.com. And by the way, you can also get everything sent directly to your inbox on Monday mornings by subscribing to our newsletter. There I put all the links to the new episodes, some fun things that we're talking about, you know, if you want to preview things before you listen. Okay, let's dive in. This week's recipes were vegan winter vegetable stew with cheesy dumplings by Rabbit and Wolves. Dak Dorit Tang, spicy chicken stew from Korean Bop Sang, and Moroccan fish stew from BBC Food. Betsy, I'll tell you this. When winter really hits, all I really want to do is eat things that like are eaten with a spoon. Mm-hmm. Like I just don't want, I don't want salads anymore. I just want, <laughs> want like a soup, something to warm me up. I mean, we have actually pretty wide variety this week. So first up, we have a vegan option. Always Mm -hmm. good to get your veggies in this time of year. Some people maybe be going vegan for January. Good luck Mm -hmm. to you, you know. So here's um, a vegan winter vegetable stew with cheesy dumplings by Rabbit and Wolves. And I would describe this as a big bowl of winter vegetable comfort topped with some savory herby dumplings. Mm -hmm. Kind of in a nutshell, right? So to make it, you first peel and chop into large chunks three carrots, an onion, a parsnip, potatoes, and mushrooms. And you start by sautéing the onions until they get kind of nice and golden. Add in your garlic, let it get fragrant. And then you deglaze a pan with apple cider vinegar, which I had never done before, so it was kind of interesting. Then you add in the rest of the vegetables, let it cook for a bit, and then pour in the apple juice, vegetable broth, and soy sauce with some herbs, sage, thyme, and bay leaves. Just simmer that up until the vegetables are tender, which is about 20 minutes. Meanwhile, you make some dumplings with flour baking powder and um, baking soda, salt, pepper, sage, thyme, and for the vegan cheesiness, nutritional yeast. Mix it all up with some almond milk and olive oil, and you drop big spoonfuls into the broth, pop your lid back on, and let it cook for 10 minutes. So like I said, I feel like this is like the the most carby vegan comfort food you can find. (laughs) Um, How did everyone like it, Betsy? Yeah, so I made this just for us. Ryan's gone this week, so it was just me and the mm. kids. And they liked it. Okay. I felt like I was just like, oh my gosh, this is this is very carby, starchy. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, it was. I think this mm-hmm. might take a couple of days to get over this um, <laughs> vegan stew here, which just um, like lots of water. And lots mm, of um, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. However, I, you know, I thought the flavors were tasty. To be honest, I forgot to pick up the nutritional yeast, so I can't comment mm. on the faux cheesiness of this. Did you? Did that come through really for you? I or? I did. It it didn't. I mean, I I'm okay. not. People are going to get up in arms about this, but I am not 100% sold on the absolute cheesiness of nutritional yeast. Okay. I think it's got a very, like, umami flavor to it. And maybe if you're not eating the cheese, like, that tastes like cheese to you. Um, I didn't really notice it in the dumplings too, okay. too much. I think if you've got – I have it in my fridge. I have bought it for other recipes. I like it on popcorn. Sometimes That's what people always say, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and it's actually pretty good. So I just had some, but I think you could easily leave it out. To be honest, okay. yeah, I didn't know if I was mis- missing like a flavor blast there. Or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't go flavor flavor blast on that. I, but I, like, I agree with you, Betsy. I think the broth was actually really good. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. kind of surprised. I was like, oh, the apple cider vinegar, a little bit of apple juice, the soy sauce ended up pretty well. Um, I mean, I'm with you. This was really heavy. This is pretty thick. And I probably should have, like, added a little extra water at the end. 
Um, I feel like if you made this after a nice big ski outside and you're really cold and you just want Mm -hmm. something like, you know, kind of like heavier to warm you up. Um, I liked it, but like a bowl of this, I needed a nap, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I I was like, like, oh. "Oh." Trying to lighten up after the holidays, Kate. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Bowl? It was, it was a bowl, it was a bowl of carbs. It was a bowl of carbs, but it was a bowl of like veggie carbs. So I felt Uh like, I don't know. You are getting some nutrients out of that. That said, I ate this, did not miss the meat of a chicken stew at all. Mm -hmm. You know, no complaints there. Um, So I feel like if you're going to, if you want to cook something vegan, but you want something that's a little heartier, maybe you're missing that in your vegan salads or something, like go ahead and cook this up. So this is like a high three out of five stars for me. I'm not sure I'd make it in a regular rotation, but I do think it was tasty. Um, what about you, Betsy? Yeah. I think the mushrooms did kind of break, break things up, like yeah. break the carbiness up a little bit. I think that saved it. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of going with a three out of five for me too. I'm not totally sold on this recipe. I thought it was great. It was like flavor, the, the brothy flavors, mm. but I was not, like, I, I don't know if I can see myself making this again. Yeah. But worth trying. I get that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So next up, we have the spicy chicken stew, the Korean spicy chicken stew from Korean Bob Singh. Kate, tell us about this one. So one thing I've learned when I've been exploring Korean food a little bit more is they do stews really well. Like, you can find a bunch of Korean stews out there. Um, and so this is really amazing recipes. This one, the recipe is actually for the slow cooker, which we know how I feel about slow cookers. So I actually (laughs) adapted Mm -hmm. it for the instant pot. (laughs) I was like, "Mm, I don't have four hours, but it also has directions for a stovetop. So we'll put the adaptation for the instant pot. um, And I'll talk about that in a bit, but you can also do this um, just, you know, using your pots and pans. Anyway, so to make it, you take three pounds of bone and chicken, chicken, the thighs of the drumsticks, and you put them in your cooker with big chunks of potatoes, onions, and carrots, and you make a sauce of gochugaro, which is Korean chili flakes, gochujang, which is Korean pepper sauce, um, soy sauce, rice wine, sugar, and honey. Pour that all over everything, and you cook it in the slow cooker for four hours on high or six hours on low. And when it's done, stir in a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil, a couple teaspoons, I think, And you just serve it topped with sesame seeds, some sliced up scallions, plenty of white rice on the side. Uh, Betsy, I'm so curious. You said you did a friend lunch with this. So I want to know how this turned out. Yeah. So my friend Melanie, who I actually made the dumplings with, just recently got an Instant Pot on sale at Target post-holidays. So she had texted me this earlier, like last week. And I said, oh, I'll come over. I'm going to see your new house and I'll bring some ingredients and we'll make one of the podcast recipes together in your Instant Pot. Mm -hmm. And so when you said that you had adapted this to the Instant Pot, I thought, oh, good. I need to make this one anyways. This is what we'll make together. So I – it was just easy because you – I mean, it couldn't be more straightforward. I feel like with the potatoes, onions, carrots, I Mm -hmm. mean, nothing (laughs) that's crazy here. I yeah. um, brought over my Korean chili flakes and there you go. You know, like a few of the like small pantry items that w- were um, were needed. But we put it together. I think it maybe took us five or ten minutes to just kind of get everything mm-hmm. in the instant pot, and then we set it for like the thirteen minutes that was in your notes. Um, we kind of took a little tour of her new house. <laughs> nice. And by the time we were had done a with soda, that, nice yeah, tea. <laughs> like, had, and after we were done with that, we came back and it had been like, you know, 10 minutes of kind of natural releasing or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So it was sort of ready to ready to go. And we actually did not eat this over rice. Um, oh, we just had it as kind of like a brothy chicken with the potatoes and the carrots uh, because we didn't want to we didn't just didn't feel like making the rice. And then also, um, you know, it's kind of a lighter lunch. Sure. It did sure. not feel like it needed the rice. So I thought it was delicious. We both said it might have been a little bit easier to eat. And if we made it again, we might make it with boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Mm. Mm-hmm. That was the mm-hmm. only comment was I'm not sure 
you know, obviously they always say it adds more flavor, but I just thought for ease of eating. And if I was going to do yeah. this with my kids, definitely I would go boneless, skinless. Uh, and I did like the red pepper flakes gave it like a little bit of heat, but not too much. And it was just yeah. really pleasant and delicious. And we both really liked it. Yeah. This I thought was so good. I will say there's actually a recipe note saying don't use boneless <laughs> Oh, is because it's yeah they're oh, like because funny. for the very reason you said which is like it's not as delicious i'm kind of like mm. that's i mean hilarious. yeah i was like no i definitely do this boneless skin yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean like at the end of the day the actual like level of deliciousness i don't know is it yeah. is it like overridden by the fact that your kids are going to complain about peeling skin off chicken no it's 100 percent not Yes. No. Yeah. And I actually thought about that. I brought it to work the next day and I, I was like, oh man, cutting this off a chicken thigh bone is not that much fun at my desk. You know, so I, I get that. Yeah. I would probably yeah. do the same. You know, I, this really made me glad and we'll talk about this later, like that I had all the pantry items to make this because carrots, onions, and potatoes, mm-hmm. I don't know, like very rarely. I mean, I have to buy potatoes because I don't go through them very often, but Everything else, like I have all the Korean stuff, so that was just really easy. I, I agree. This was super easy. The other thing I'll say about the chicken, there's some people who don't like dark meat chicken. I think you'd have to rewrite the recipe to do this with chicken breast. And like if I get an overwhelming request, I can rewrite it for that. But I think it would probably mean stovetop or like quick release instant pot, throw the breasts in do something else. Mm -hmm. It's like a whole, because the chicken breasts are going to take a lot less time to cook than your hard vegetables, the onions and the carrots and things. Um, To do it in the Instant Pot, what we did is we just added a quarter cup of water to the pot just to make sure that there's enough so you didn't get that burn warning, right? And um, we cooked it on high pressure manual for 13 minutes with a 10 minute natural release that seem to kind of do the trick. And because this is chopped up chicken pieces, I had read in other recipes that you can slash the meat of the chicken mm-hmm. kind of to the bone to get that sauce into the chicken. So I did that as well. And I think that was really good. And um, I actually took everything out of the pot and left the sauce and then reduced it for a bit. That was kind of delicious because I did it over the rice thing. Yeah. But I don't think did, you have to. We did that too, just because you had said you did. Mm-hmm. And then in the notes that you sent me, and then I also wanted to show Melanie, like, the saute. Like, this is how you can just right. switch it over quickly to the saute and that kind of stuff. So um, we actually did that as well. And I was thinking at that point, I thought, ooh, this would be delicious if you had rice. Right. To kind of, kind of soak, soak up this. all that sauce. Yeah, soak that up. Yeah. yeah. So for rating, I give this a four to five stars. I really liked it. It was really good. Yeah. I do, too. I want to try to make this again. With those boneless skinlets, even though it's going mm. against the recipe recommendations, I want to try it. But I think it'll be fine. Five. Yeah. That may mm-hmm. be delicious. <laughs> okay, so our last recipe of the episode is a Moroccan fish stew from BBC Food. Here we go, Betsy. Mm-hmm. The recipe that we've been yeah. talking about for days. All right. So, okay. So this last recipe, like the title says, is kind of a Moroccan inspired stew and it's got chickpeas in it, a meaty white fish like a cod, onions and tomatoes. And then all those warm spices, the cumin, um, I'm sorry, not the cumin, the um, turmeric and the cinnamon. um, Oh, and cumin. Yeah. So to get it going, what you do is you slice an onion thinly and you throw it in a Dutch oven to get it soft with some olive oil. You mince up some garlic. And when the onions are translucent, you add that garlic to the pan along with the spices. Like I said, the cumin, the turmeric, um, some grated fresh ginger, and you just let them bloom and get nice and um, fragrant. Then you add in a little cayenne pepper, a can of diced tomatoes, and about half a can of water. You simmer all that for 10 minutes and then add in some chunks of the white firm fish. It's about a pound. And you just cook it until the fish is almost done. And the last thing to go in is a can of drained chickpeas, a big drizzle or two of honey, and let the chickpeas warm up and finish the fish up. And that's it. That's all there is to the recipe. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They suggested serving it with um, slivered almonds and cilantro. And and that's it. That's your stew. Betsy, you and I cannot get over this recipe. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. tell me more. Tell me your yeah. thoughts. Well, okay. Everyone I talk to 
was saying, I actually said to Melanie, I have a couple recipes. We could do, you know, this Korean chicken thing, or I could mm. make this fish stew. And she was like, ooh, I mean, I'm sure the fish stew is going to be good, but <laughs> maybe not. And then I mentioned to our mom that we were going to make a fish stew. And she was mm. kind of like, oh, a fish stew. Ooh, interesting. Um, it, so people had this really – had a really funny reaction. And I kind of did too huh. about making a fish stew. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But they are – it's getting a bad rap, cat, Kate, because this <laughs> is like – this was the most amazing soup stew I've definitely made this season, I think. So good. And, you know, every once in a while – we just like hit on a recipe where I think both of us are are mm-hmm. saying, "Whoa, this stop the presses!" Yes, this is really amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think you and I can kind of be like, like I, I know I can be. I won't t- t- say what you are, but I know I can be like a recipe bully. Like mm-hmm. once I get like if I get a recipe like this, I want to make everyone make it. I'm like, no, don't understand. Fish stew is amazing. Yes, and that's kind of what we said. It was like the heirloom tomato and peach or stone fruit yes. salad. Mm-hmm. Where you're like, I know you don't want to eat tomatoes and plums together, but, but just you're gonna love trust it. Me and try it once, and yeah. that's sort of how I feel about this fish stew. And also, Kate, like you were saying, it could not have been easier. Oh my gosh! And it's kind of thrifty. I used I used tilapia from Aldi mm-hmm. on this, mm-hmm. and I thought it was delicious. Did the tilapia break down at all? Did you have a problem with that or no? Just a little bit. Like, I felt like I stirred it a little bit less. I kind of went overboard with the stirring and then I was like, oh, no, I should, you know, back it off. Take Mm -hmm. your spoon out. You do not need to be stirring it this much. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean, it cooks for so little time. You don't really need to, like, stir the heck out of it. That's for sure. Poaching this fish in the broth. There's no be stirring in there all the time. Yeah. Uh, And... I mean, both of us said, too, the leftovers were great. Mm. The leftovers the next day with some naan. Me, too. And... Oh. Yeah. Delicious. Sweet. It was yeah. so good. I, guys, listeners, listeners, I'm telling you this. Make this stew. Yeah. It's so good. I, um, so I, I didn't use tilapia. I, we have a local fishmonger and if I can, I try to remember to buy fish from them. And when I went in, he recommended monkfish and just, you know, like this is not a, you know, inexpensive place to go buy fish, but it's all local, it's sustainably catched and caught, excuse me. And so I was like, all right, I'll go with the monkfish. But even with that splurge, mm-hmm. I like thought about it with a can of chickpeas and some onions, this came in under $4 a serving. Which, and I pay, I did not, you know, skimp on the fish here. And that was like, it was like this fun treat because the fish was so delicious and everything was just, uh, I, I can't believe I'm talking about fish stew this much. I know. People are probably bored. I don't care if you're bored because you need to make this stew. That's Mm -hmm. all I have to say about that. Yeah. Okay. This is obviously a five out of five. Um, I might change my profile picture to a picture of fish stew. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Okay. So yeah. here's a final. I did not address this. Like, did your kids eat fish stew? So, right. Um, That's a good point. Yeah, I loved it. Girls ate it up. They were really happy with this. Mm. Grant took one bite and said, "This tastes like dead fish in a bowl." And I was <sighs> like, "Okay, no really? need to hear this." So, anyways, <laughs> he was not really onto the the fish stew party, but. You always have one hater in the group, so I mean, yeah, and and yeah, Grant, yeah. Mm, you know, some that's not know. super his wheelhouse. And your kids, your girls do love fish, so they do, yeah, they yeah. do. So I, um, I caught kind of what I thought was expected reactions, mm-hmm. and you know, I just I cannot say enough about it. We both can't say enough about it. Yeah, tell us when five. you make this. Yeah. Tell us when you make this. Yes. Okay. So wrapping it up, obviously the fish stew won. It wins every time. It's going to win for the rest of my life. I'm in love with the fish stew. I'm going to have like fish stew and then some cherry peach panzanella. And then- <laughs> <laughs> Just right off into the sunset. Yes. yes. Our work here is done. <laughs> All right. Well, even if it's not the fish stew, if any of these recipes sound good, make sure to check out our show notes and grocery list at dinnersisters.com. There we have links to all the recipes, any tips or techniques we talked about, uh, everything that we talked about on this episode, we've got there for you. And if you'd like to chat more, 
maybe about fish stew, maybe about other things, you can always ask to join our Dinner Sisters Facebook group. If you search Dinner Sisters Podcast, you can ask to join the group from there. Okay, Kay, before we head to the smorgasbord, a break. Okay, so on the smorgasbord today, we're talking about what we keep in our pantry and how that's changed with our podcast journey mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you and I have talked about this a little bit and touched on it here and there. We talked about on the, the podcast today. I think, you know, we definitely, I definitely have new items in there that I use regularly that I definitely had not used before the podcast. And so for me, it's um, the gochujang and the, um, so the sauce, the chili sauce, Korean chili sauce, and the Korean pepper flakes. And um, both of those I have in my pantry. I use them all the time. I use the sauce on eggs like nearly every day. I um, squirt it in like some tuna salad the other day. Mm. The pepper flakes, anytime a recipe calls for pepper flakes, usually I'm putting those in because it's like this low, slow heat. Um, I just love them. And the other two things are kind of like, I find it funny that I didn't have them in my pantry all the time before, but I always have a can of chickpeas now and I always have coconut milk. Mm-hmm. Just because all the, the the best recipes that we've made have these two things in common. And yeah. I feel like, you know, if I've got the chickpeas, I can always make that chickpea salad that was so good with, um, you know, the toast and the, and the toasted, um, mm-hmm. what am I going to say? The sunflower seeds, the vegan. Oh, that one was delightful. The coconut milk. I feel like we've made so many delicious curries with that before. So, yeah, those are the those are the kind of things, the, the Korean pepper stuff and then the chickpeas and coconut milk. Yeah, I'm with you on the coconut milk. I am crazy about having that in my pantry right now i just Mm -hmm. because i do also love all those curries and i've been really enjoying all those flavors i have added fish sauce which i did not really have before and i've been using it yeah Mm -hmm. Um, i go through a ton of that now i bought the big bottle oh did you yeah they sell a big one yeah Mm -hmm. Uh uh-huh it's like the size of an olive oil bottle. It's amazing. Oh, that's fi- oh wow. You really yeah, it's, it's, win it. Woo. For yeah. anyone worried about whether or not we're going to keep going with the podcast. Right. Just- <laughs> I bought 32 ounces. No, it's not 32 ounces. It's probably like 20 ounces of fish. It's like a lot. Your fish it's an aggressive, sauce is- it's an aggressive amount of fish sauce. Yeah, it's telling the story here. It's giving, our, <laughs> giving us indicators. Uh, right. Yes, and I have been buying, someone asked me in the, Facebook group about the uh, what kind of olive oil we've been getting or if it's consistent. And I have actually mm-hmm. seen so many places now um, people buying California olive oil. And so that's just been my kind of go-to in my pantry. And I've been going yeah. through that a lot too. I mean, mm-hmm. just cooking more or cooking through some of these cookbooks, that's really, um, you know, I've leveled up that a little bit. Yeah, so for sure. Good. Um the sesame oil and like the toasted sesame oil, I have mm. small bottles of each. That comes up and that just imparts a lot of flavor. And I feel like it does, yeah. when I need it, I'm so happy that I have it. So that's been kind of a nice addition. And I'm with you with the um, Korean pepper flakes, Kate. I am using yeah. those all the time because I love that yeah. like kind of low sweet heat that they give. Mm-hmm. I'm crazy about it. And then the last thing I'll say is that the we got some really good Zanzibar black pepper and some yes. Urfa chili pepper from Burlap and Barrel. I I don't think we can go back from that, Kate. Mm-mm. Ryan Mm-mm. is obsessed with it. He <laughs> loves that Urfa chili. That Oh, that stuff is like, really good. Oh, it's so good. And he puts that on everything. And it's got that's got kind of like a low, slow burn. On it, it does, and a bit, a bit more of a smoky kind of thing than I think, like the um, the Korean pepper. But I, I they're they're each yeah. different and each beautiful in their own way. Yeah, and he puts that kind of smoky black pepper, um, kind of almost like a multi flavor to it too. But mm-hmm. he will put it a lot in like if I make just a like that vegan um, potato soup. Had he been home for that, he probably would have put it in there, like in. Right. soups and mixed into things like that so yeah do you have anything else in your pantry that you want to mention before we sign off i do because this is literally the only place i have to talk about it 
without Mm -hmm. being a complete weirdo. So um, (laughs) I'm in love with Chili Crisp. I don't know if anyone else is doing this, but guys, imagine if you take some oil and in it you toast Szechuan chilies, regular red pepper chilies, some a bunch of garlic and a little bit of like soybeans for the umami and it's Mm -hmm. crunchy. Yeah, Kate, I think anyone who has who was reading like Food 52 and Serious Eats last year, they like they just wanted everyone to That's make it. Right. That's right. That's right. Oh, I forgot about that. Is but they're making make everyone this. make it. I yeah. bought it. And you I this it. I looked at it. Yeah. I looked at that. I you're right. I did there were people were going crazy with it. Yes, people were making it, which I think is like even for me I'm like, "Come on." Yeah. I don't know. Maybe condiments are my line where I'm just like, "Ah." But I bought a small jar of it because probably I remember the trend when I was at the mm-hmm. Asian grocery store. And I was like, all right, I'll see why it's so good. Oh, my goodness. Oh, really? This is so delicious. Mm. It's like garlicky without being too hot. It's spicy without being too, like, in your face. A little bit of crunch is super good. I will put it on um, eggs in the morning. I've been stirring into sometimes when we have, um, like, kongi, the rice porridge. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Stirred into there. I stirred it into, um, I've stirred into a lot of the soups we've made, like as a little like extra, extra something. I mean, if you're a person who's like, loves to have a little jar of something in the cupboard, I think if, if Ryan likes that Urfa chili, he might actually like this chili crisp too. It's kind of oily. You just get it like, you're just kind of dabbing it on. It's just really delicious. I eat a lot of like soft boiled eggs as snacks. Um, we're mm-hmm. kind of on a kick for that. And so I've been kind of dabbing that on them. I don't know. It's just delicious. It was super inexpensive at the Asian grocery store. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. Um, if you're looking for something fun to kind of spice things up, I'd recommend it. Okay, Kate. So coming up next week, we have our first cookbook review of the year. And we are diving into Midwest Made. Yes. So exciting. Baking. We're going to. Oh, my gosh. Take a week. So much baking. baking. I'm losing my mind. So much baking. I cannot wait. It's going to be really, really fun. All right. So that's it for dinner this week. See you next time on The Dinner Sisters. We'll save a spot at the table for you. Mm -hmm.